I'm heading out with this group of homeless alcoholics, armed with a chainsaw, on a mission to cut down a Christmas tree. What could possibly go wrong? How many trees? These are familiar faces to me. They're staff and residents of an alcohol treatment center in Ottawa. These alcoholics have been called the worst of the worst, inveterate drinkers who failed at all traditional attempts to sober up. But on this day, as they search for the perfect Christmas tree to take back to their shelter, the possibilities seem as endless as the rolling countryside. I came here one year ago to meet them. It's called The Oaks, a residence for people in the Managed Alcohol Program, or MAP. It seems so unconventional, treating alcoholics with alcohol. But is this how you start every day? Yeah. First thing, shortly after 7.30, you're here for that drink? Yeah. From 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m., every hour, residents here line up for a drink. It's known as the pour. Each drink is measured to the ounce, like medicine to treat their addiction, not cure it. So you see the alcohol here like a, me a medical dose? That's the way you look at it? Yeah, that's, that's how it is. Because for them, for some of them, when they get up in the morning, if they don't get it, they will start shaking. This is all about harm reduction and cost savings. This program keeps them out of hospital emergency rooms or the police drunk tank. Dr. Jeff Turnbull, co-founder of the program, says this keeps them safe, if not sober. This is um, not good for anybody, and we see the consequences of that. They're drinking less than they were, mm -hmm. um, but what do, what do you do when somebody doesn't, can't, or won't stop drinking? Do you then abandon them? And uh, we don't do that in palliative care when somebody's failed their chemotherapy, we don't say, we can't do anything further. We say, no, we can still care for you. Look at that beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 like that? Speck it like it's hot. The MAP program is based on the Peter principle. And this is Peter. And this is what he looked like when I met him last year, beaten up panhandling downtown by his own brother, fighting over five bucks. I'll go really slow taking off the bandage, okay? Seems like you have a rough time, Peter, when you go downtown, eh? Well, yeah, I come back with something new. Yeah. A year ago, he was always the first in line for the poor. A year later, he still is. But Peter lets me know he's a changed man. Are you staying out of trouble? Define trouble. Well, uh, how about uh, getting beaten up and having to go to the hospital? I haven't been downtown, like around Rideau Street, for months now. I've been staying over here and I don't panhandle anymore. I retired. But are you feeling better? I'm feeling all right, yeah. I'm getting my teeth clean. They may be white, but they'll still look like shit. Oh, well. But you're getting them cleaned? Yeah, I have, uh, what do we call it? This Monday, I have uh, these things up for you. And, and then on Friday coming up, I'll have my eyes looked at wow. by a doctor and see if I get glasses or not. Mm. You're, uh, you're getting all fixed up. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's like a new and improved Peter. Yeah. I even have a PS2 in my bedroom. Oh, wow. Annie gets five regular. It's hard to believe in change, especially in a place where time is measured in ounces and routine is the key to keeping people alive. People like Jimmy. I can't forget the first time we met last year. I uh, wrote a song about my life. And rather than say it or try to tell you what my life was like, I wouldn't mind singing it to you. Please. We're buddies, right? All right. I'm not uh, gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna, you're not gonna think I'm crazy because I want to sing a song to you? Not at all, Jim. All right, I'll, I'll try all. my best to sing the song. When I was a young man, I picked up my first beer. Little did I know that it would lead me here. Full of fear and sadness, it took away my wife. Hungry, lonely, tired, it almost took my life. 
Well, I couldn't stand to live that way, so I got on my knees. Then I found a big book, and I got what I need. Oh, the big book, oh, the big book. Oh, the big book saved my life, yeah, the big book saved my life. And when they open up that door and I am free to leave, I'll change my way so I can be the man I want to be. Oh, the big book. Oh, oh the, the big, big book. book. <laughs> oh, the big book saved my life. You got it, buddy. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a story of my life. Mm. On this visit, I spy Jimmy across the room. He's making paper flowers as Christmas gifts. Great to see you. What do you got here? Oh, I made these out of uh, paper. Jimmy's wisdom is hard-earned after years on the streets and years in this program. So I really watch it now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm finally getting it that I don't need to get completely loaded anymore. I don't need that. I know what I'm doing every morning I wake up. I have no guilty conscience and I'm not in jail. And I didn't hurt anybody with my words or physically punch somebody drunk, Mm -hmm. get into a fight. None of that happens anymore, and it's great, you know? Because I had some pretty rough times out there. I bet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're safe here. I'm safe here, yeah. So what's the future hold for him? Well, true to form, Jimmy's story is like a song. A song he's writing, but doesn't know where it will end. And, you got uh, any new songs? <laughs> well, actually, I, I, uh, I started one. <laughs> I've got the title of it, but I don't uh, have the rest of the words, so if somebody w- wants to finish it, I'll give them the title and they can finish the song. What's the title? It goes, I went downtown to pour myself a glass of cold, clear water, cold, clear water, water. <laughs> I said that to two guys down at the beer store. They were waiting for the beer store to open one Sunday morning. And I sang them that song while we were waiting for the beer store to open. And then I seen them a few weeks later and they come up to me and they go, I went downtown to bar myself. And they said, I can't get it out of my head. It's such a catchy little tune, right? I just don't know how to finish it yet. Coming up, stories of hope that may help Jimmy finish his song. There's always more to our stories. You can keep up with The Fifth Estate by subscribing to our weekly newsletter. We'll tell you what we're working on and share updates on past stories. Sign up on our website at cbc.ca slash fifth. Okay, come on. You won't find many eminent physicians, a recipient of the Order of Canada to boot, who invites homeless alcoholics to his house every Christmas for a party but Dr. Jeff Turnbull does. Oh. <laughs> so have we got enough, you think? One, four. I don't think, I don't think uh, we should be four, here yeah. in that room. Why do you bring him out here? I, mean, oh, you do, they, I know you do this every year. Yeah. Why is it important for you? They, uh, well, it's important for them because they get to get outside. You know, many of these people grew up in environments like this and coming back grounds them again. So that's, they just love this. Um, and the more we could do this, the better. Um, I like bringing them here because it's, it's just very rewarding for me to see them have a great time. And... Dr. Turnbull is medical director overseeing Ottawa's managed alcohol program, which he helped develop 16 years ago. Our challenge is to support them, move them progressively out of that environment of uh, chronic addiction, uh, help them when they fail, not judge them, mm-hmm. and promote abstinence as much as we can. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Abstinence may seem like an unrealistic expectation here. With one drink every hour, many of the residents in this program down the equivalent of about three bottles of wine a day, every day. Seven ounces. But the theory is if they can control their addiction, then it's possible some can wean themselves off the hourly poor. Corinne was one of those success stories when I met her here last year, trying hard to stay sober. It's been eight months, Mm -hmm. not drinking the wine every hour. What difference has this place made in your life? I have my family back. I've got mom and dad, you know, and, and I treasure that. I owe the shepherds my life. 
I do, for giving it back to me. But when I came back, who did I see standing in line for the hourly drink? How are you? I'm great, how are you doing? Great, great. Well, it could be better, but great, I'm still here. Some kitchen. When I was here a year ago and talked to you, I thought, here's somebody who I could actually see leaving the Oaks. But now I'm not so sure. No. That's the thing with addiction, you never know what's going to set you off, what's going to keep you okay. And Oh, I, God forget, my, my parents, like, they're going to flip out. <laughs> Why will they flip out? Because, like, I'm 52, but they still think I'm, like, 12. <laughs> it's hard. What's you know, it? it's what? hard. It's just like I just going to feel like I let them down again. You know? Yeah. But what comforts Corinne is after living here for seven years, no one judges her as she struggles. I can breathe here. I can be myself. You know, like nobody's hated me for some indiscretion or maybe something stupid I said or a dumb behavior I did or whatever. Like. There's nobody attacking me. Hope can be elusive at times in a home for chronic alcoholics, but it is indeed alive. If you weren't here, where do you think you'd be? Probably in jail or dead. Last year, I met Elijah, who was painting scenes from his home in Pond Inlet. I asked him why he signed his paintings with a number. What's this? This is E5. One nine eight three. Back in the days before 1969, we were registered with numbers. So to the government, my name was not Elisa. To the government, my name was E five one nine eight three. Elijah, you ready to take care of his appointment? Yes. Okay, so he's going to the dentist, and this is the address. And there's his COVID card. There. Elijah has cut down on the poor he's been able to take a job as a paid peer worker at the Oaks, accompanying residents to downtown Ottawa for appointments. We'll be safe with Elijah. All right. Okay. okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah, by having a job, what difference does that make for you in the way you feel about yourself? It makes me feel like I'm more helpful and feel better about myself, too. Are you learning that you've got a lot of good sides? Yes, a lot of good sides. Did you know that before? Not really, no. I had to dig deep. Yeah. While the residents have plenty to learn about themselves, they also have plenty to teach, if you listen to them. Last year, Jimmy made a plea to others to learn from his mistakes. We turned that heartfelt plea into an online video and shared it on social media. Yeah, well, I wanted to share, share your story. I wanted you to see this. I spent seven years on the street. I remember sleeping underneath a tractor trailer and I slept underneath that trailer for about five months. It was horrible living like that. You can't wash, you can't change, you have nothing. I've never seen this. I feel 100% better than I did. I'm healthy, I eat good every day. I've got a nice big bed to sleep in. So if you need help, ask these people and they'll help you. Like they help me. You know what, Jimmy? This has been seen by two and a half million people. Have wow. watched this. Really, eh? Yeah. That many people, eh? That many people. And you told me you, you wanted to make a difference. Yes. You told me that. Yes. And I think you made a difference, Jimmy. Good. I think, you made a, I think you've made a big difference. I'm glad. <laughs> Two and a half million, eh? <laughs> well, isn't that something? Two and a half million people watched you. I hope some people got something from it. I'm sure they did. Yeah. Stories like Jimmy's have inspired Dr. Turnbull too, so much so that he's stepping down as Chief of Staff at Ottawa Hospital to devote more time to the homeless, especially those struggling with opioid addiction. We've learned a lot from the Managed Alcohol Program, and we've learned about the principles of harm reduction, 
um, and combining that to appropriate treatment facilities. I'll continue to do this work and it'll continue to expand, um, but I'm gonna devote myself almost exclusively to the homeless now. Shouldn't you be thinking about retirement? <laughs> That's never been in my lexicon. <laughs> I don't, uh, I enjoy this too much. Just a few closing notes on the Managed Alcohol Program. Ottawa is one of eight Canadian cities with a MAP program. Well, the staff at the Oaks tell us there's a need to expand the program, not only in Ottawa, but in other cities right across this country. Social researchers from as far away as Australia have come to Ottawa to study the MAP program and see if it could be adapted to their home countries. And there was a peer-reviewed study published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal about the MAP program. If you want to read that and read more about the impact the program's having in Canada, go to our website, cbc.ca slash fifth.